Hi, good evening. This is Sarah Chiu, the program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Thank you for tuning in. Um, this evening, I'm going to talk about, uh, continue what I spoke about last week, is the sound shifting between human languages. And if I have time, I will also go on a little bit to talk about the pictorial nature of Western alphabet. And also, if I can, you know, I can talk a little bit a little, uh, about the relationship between the H word and the S word okay and I will start my uh, slides now and again uh, I have uploaded all the past episode is 49 of them in YouTube so you just type in the uh, program name basket starfish our language core you'll find the uh, last 49 episode uh, I have uh, spoke about the, the letter K and the A and also the H and the S and a lot of the tradition that uh, are involved in our language development and uh, my research is uh, has been going on for more than 20 years and I'm presenting it from a female point of view also from an Asian point of view I hope you will understand uh, the points that I'm trying to present to you instead instead of the patriarchal uh, point of view that we are constantly uh, uh, been taught okay so I will uh, begin now um, with the slides first of all I will show you the um, image of the basket starfish as you can see I don't believe that we are a different family tree um, this is the common core of language that we share every single one of us you know single culture is just a branch from the same core so we stood on equal ground you know since very ancient time a lot of the language components are actually acted out in our uh, cultural practices not necessarily you know uh, in state in our language as the as lineal as the linguists always show you okay so um again it's not a separate uh, tree families and because if we, we believe that you know every tree is of different sizes and, and, and on top of the other so that will usher in human hierarchy so I think this needs to be changed so we can uh, judge each other or look at each other on a more level ground okay and uh, I of course I introduced the Chinese uh, way of looking at it and the Chinese uh, oracle bones so you can understand a little bit of how the ancient region pictograph okay and now I go back to this week's uh, topic I would uh, last week I show you this uh, simple map you know showing you how certain sound actually you know become linked to each other as uh, unlikely as you think B and M is linked you know I already show you you know in the video of the baby lamb being weaned from milk you can go back to that episode and see how uh, our human ear cannot distinguish the B or M easily okay so today I'm going to still uh, concentrate on this part but I will show you if I want to go on I will explain you know in the future you know how the um, bow will also shifting to one another in a cyclical way and also certain uh, semi vow will also uh, shift into vowels and also in different form and different way okay so some of them will also link back to each other other as I will, will tell you uh, in the S and the H relationship okay but this week again I'm going to only concentrate on this small part okay and uh, today uh, I, w I want you to be mentally prepared using something round like a fence you know that encircle ourselves since the beginning for protection as as a way of understanding how these uh, consonantal sounds you know are shifting into each other first of all the W is all I, I have already spoken about it last week about the swastika and also the well you know something that goes around of course the R also has a part in it you know so uh, you can think of it as the railing you know around the building and then uh, this way you know you can also look at the H as I uh, put a lot of stress last week the way and the one in Chinese and they were are always you know like a cyclical form you know in the ancients 
uh, uh, conceptual uh, understanding. So this circular way, you know, and also the railing, the artwork, and um, and I will talk about the edge later. But uh, I want you to to see this again, you know, this little uh, quadrilateral underneath, you know, when the word become the verb, become the fur, and the fur when the verb become the fur, and then the verb become the fur and also uh, the shifting to the P so uh, you will understand this easily so um, once again today's topic will be uh, start with an H like the hedge you know some barrier that uh, that we understand and I will go on to uh, explain about the uh, about the hedge the relationship of the hedge uh, together with the fence and all the shifting sound within this little area and then also if I have time I will talk a little bit about the uh, pictorial form of the S in the Western world and also its relationship with the H sound, okay? So, once again, uh, if you look at these words, you know, the hatch, uh, which is which hinder your your movement and also uh, how, why we call some uh, the, the lines that we draw called hatching and also why we call the hashtag. These things are still, you know, uh, stuck with the H sound and H writing. So as you can see, uh, this word I already showed you last week, uh, in reality, it actually pronounced as fun, okay? And you can understand as the natural fence with of trees you know okay so it's a boundary and then the ancient already draw this hashtag right there or the hatching right there to uh, show some impediment of movement and um, if you compare it to other languages you know if you can compare it in in this way I show you some ancient Hebrew this is the East, uh, ancient Hebrew H uh, symbol and also of course the Phoenician to use the similar thing but the ancient symbol uh, Hebrew also have the, the horizontal and uh, way like this you know one is to link the other one is to bar so you can understand that uh, all words always carry the polar meaning to extremes but uh, now I'm only going to talk about the barring the the hatching the hindrance part okay so it's horizontally put around like this okay so in English you can understand as he uh, hatch or the hindrance that uh, it uh, gave right so um, this is the hedge you know about which you know you can see that it's already used you know th more than 3,000 years ago in the Chinese to show the impediment of a certain movement so uh, in Hung in the old Hungarian runic before they choose to use the uh, Latin writing this is an X uh, symbol and then um, even now in Hungarian <coughs> this word Kata is also uh, means the boundary. So you can see that somehow, you know, these kind of uh, writing still uh, uh, brings up the mental concept of something that bars you of movement, okay? Interestingly, if I show you the development of the Chinese writing, the, the fence, the fan, we also use it like this. If you compare this and this, the old Hungarian rune, it actually, you know, we share very similar mental concept you know to show the border okay so uh, the German word hack you know will be the the hedge okay the Dutch hack all this will be uh, what you grow around your house or a big area to impede the the, the entrance of, of uh, the animal or, or unwanted human being okay and then in Arabic you know the similar sound hat actually it means the boundary the border okay and the Chinese as a whole bunch of things you know we distinguish them visually but they all carry the same sound the first one is hut hut is a bunch of uh, silk thread so you can actually understand that as this you know it also uh, you can understand as a rope or a thread is hut okay uh, but we use this uh, determinative to show visually to ourselves that this has to do with thread okay and then the other one hut is actually means to block out something to prevent something to separate or to isolate uh, very clearly you can see the door barring an animal outside so it is actually truly used as a, a as an impediment for for entrance so it carries the sound of hut very similar to all this okay so 
again we this one is also hot for this uh, it means a uh, line of control it can mean the linchpin uh, of a wheel you know the very strict line or the axle of anything so it is a line of control and then also this also carries the hot hot uh, in this position will actually means you know a, a line of control it's similar to this hut right there in Arabic it actually means the boundary of under certain hatch Money. So even if you un you read the word English uh, hegemony, so it is still a kind of control by a line, a border. Okay, so uh, the relationship of language is actually very very complicated. They are never linear. They go between concept and visual and also sound. So uh, you cannot just apply one sense. You know, uh, our uh, our five senses. You can you have to use you know bit different senses to to understand the language not just by uh, by visual okay so I'll go to the next slide again uh, I have shown this quickly uh, last week which I didn't have time to finish this is the natural natural fence uh, in English fence is actually a geographic uh, landscape you know you can use it uh, to understand it as a fence as I told you last week you know I in the 80s I was sent to the jungle of Honduras to represent Hong Kong in an international youth program I learned that whenever I see this kind of very difficult landscape that I have to to walk through this muddy area I know that normally this is just a hunting area nobody will really reside here so people uh, since ancient time use this fence area as a natural fence you know so uh, the enemy cannot really attack you that easily because of the clumsiness to move around the water and the mud okay so as oh sorry so uh, also, you know, as time goes by, if you purposefully plant trees right there, it can also use, uh, 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 serve as a fence purpose. And also, um, like this, you know, now it goes to the English uh, word, you know, fence, you know. So uh, this is a natural uh, geographic landscape. So this kind of fence is very common in England. So uh, it's the same thing with a very, uh, a lot of growth, you know, with a lot of water. So again, it's very difficult to get through. Though. So all these fence are actually a fence area for, uh, for a lot of settlement and and this is also a fence and I also show you uh, this one, you know, which I took in, uh, no, I, I, I took from the internet of Boston area, uh, at the Boston Fenway, you know, it's a very, very famous uh, baseball ground, but then around the area, why is, all, why is it called Fenway? Because it was a waterlogged area where long grasses impede uh, the movement in the ancient time. So you can still see those grasses as, as the, uh, uh, which fence the area, but of course after they drain the water, they build this famous fenway, and then, uh, but if I compare the Chinese writing farm right there, you can really understand it as the fenway, because uh, in ancient time, all these long grasses and, and trees or swampy growth is actually impede the movement of the human being, and it was understood as the fence or the farm, or the fen, or farm, fenway, okay? So you you can understand that this uh, language core you know we share a lot of shared vocabulary since ancient time because this word farm is uh, the writing itself is older than 3,000 years old so um, uh, so I, I suggest that you know we have to understand language you know by incorporating all the cultures right now all the linguists you know only look at things from the Western point of view it's impossible that the Chinese you know having thousands of years of history we it's impossible that we didn't participate in the development of language so I do want to present an Asian point of view so we can have a uh, better uh, understanding of our ancient development as human being okay so um Again, now I want to show you in this slide, you know, all this sound shifting with the Chinese farm, right there means the fence, the border, and uh, the English word fence, you will start to see uh, in different language, in Scottish, you know, I won't try to pronounce it, if you're Scottish, you know it better than me, but if you can read, you can see that it carries the component, these are all the component of the ancient sound, Irish, Danish, 
and then Punjabi right here become you know the, it's written differently transcribed differently in a Latin character but still you know pH can be pronounced as f or the p, okay? And then gradually, you know, in Telugu, also in the other Indian language, it's also a p sound. So uh, from f to p, as I said, you know, sometimes it go to b, sometimes it go to v. So, uh, but I will show you that um, these are, are all trans, uh, uh, I mean, transcribe all the different uh, language family as uh, the language will tell you. Look at this, this is Indian, this is Danish, this is Irish, this is Scottish and English, and also Sumerian. This is also um, uh, Sum I mean Sumerian, and you will see that this little part right there is the how the ancient Sumerians show grass. So you will see that they also uh, draw out the picture as a, a, a uh, an area with a lot of long grasses. Okay, so. And of course, it's a, it means fence, but you can see that, you know, uh, we're shifting back and forth. It seems that they started with a P, then we we uh, shifted into F, and then we shifted back to P again, okay? So um, on the other side, you know, when fence, you know, also has a lot to do with the mud, the sludge, the wall, swarm, and the pool, because these are the natural elements that stop us from moving. So later on, human being learned, that's why we also, build moat around you know castles to stop enemy from attacking so all these were being part of the natural uh, environment that human beings slowly learn to build artificially okay so you will see that Hindi would be punk and then Catalan how can this be so um, so similar Catalan is uh, in Spain you know so Panta and then and Portuguese and Pantano in Spanish will be Pantano also all this pointing to a swampy pool okay so all these were uh, very much like the fence of course the geographic location is a little bit different so but you can see that the sun shifting you know works perfectly the same even in Chinese even the writing is very different there is a saying called pun day for say you look at this Pan, panta and we say punde okay punde in Cantonese sound actually means a basin a depression of water so if I show you a, a reality in, in nature you can actually understand it much better so it uh, shows you again sometimes reading the book doesn't bring you reality um, the thing is that uh, I travel from place to place a lot of the time when I hear the word I'm actually seeing real places so it is very easy Easy for me to get the sound into my head together with the, the, the reality it's very different from reading them from books so you don't get the real sense okay so a natural fence is always a geographic wetland and then once again I compare the Chinese fan with all this writing actually drawing this out is to uh, it's equal to the British way of saying fence okay so uh, you can see that we did share one very common core so now I'm going on uh, to explain a little bit uh, to uh, the pictorial nature of writing even in the West. So if you don't pay uh, much attention, you think uh, alphabets are just alphabet. No, it, they are, a lot of them are actually, you know, uh, symbols of, of concepts. And a lot of them are actually uh, uh, drawings itself. So I give an example of the S forms, okay? So in nature, there are a few things that which is constantly uh, drawing my attention when I walk in the uh, wilderness when I see nature a lot of the things actually stand out as the forms of S okay there are a few things in nature first of all is the river and the bands and the other is a snake and the other thing will be a rope that you know can be curved in any other shape by in, in form of S okay so um, in very ancient Chinese we already draw out those S forms to mean the water somehow interestingly um, uh, we carry the sound of so in Cantonese still it's carry the S sound uh, from the West
yes. So um, the in, this is ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, and you will see the curving line right, right this, you know, it actually is called she, also means water, the so and she, and this is Turkish right here, su up till this very day is also means water. So you can see that, you know, the S form actually uh, conjures up, you know, the, the form of all these nature but sometimes this concept intermix in our human brain and uh, sorry since uh, English after all is my my uh, second language so uh, I lack of word to explain to you you do have to understand it through your own brain okay so the other thing uh, very interesting in Chinese we have an uh, in Cantonese we say say right there a snake I'm sure you know this word serpent and and if you change the word serpent you um, you can chase it to latin is still serpent and you can chase it to uh, uh the the hindu root which is uh, uh the sanskrit is also serpent so you will see that the sir is always you know existed since also very ancient time it exists as a triangle in the east and the west and the middle east okay so um you can see that this is uh, what i mean the core of our language okay and um, um, what I show you here are different Chinese writing. Sometimes we draw this uh, bull head right there to show the unseen energy right there. Sometimes they are more uh, in reality and sometimes they are more symbolic. Yeah, but then we also use uh, the Chinese writing borrow the snake to mean thread okay so uh, this is a component and complex form we put the thread uh, indicator right there and we put a thin snake right there and the sound is actually sin sin actually means a thin thread and then as you can see right here is a uh, thicker snake right there and the sound also changes it's called sing that means a rope you know it gets thicker so um, I will show you a German word cell cell so this is also uh, means you know a thread a string so you will see that we we do share a lot of very common sound and also uh, the Chinese goes on this is a bigger thing you can see that it's a cable a big rope okay the you, you have to pull so we have this uh, sound sock or sock or so okay so you will see that the um the, the the thicker the sound it is the thicker the rope actually is so uh, i will show you also one spanish word which came down from latin the soccer the same like this sock in cantonese it act, it does mean uh, a cable a thick rope okay so uh, can't you see all they coincide with each other so um now i go to the other side I want to show you the pictorial form in Greek okay this are a word meaning worm you will see that all these wiggling forms you know they actually put it there visually to show the worm and again you know it's not only showing the worm you know it is actually showing a lot of this helix movement and so um, you don't uh, don't tie yourself down to one explanation so they are actually very flexible in their brain so all this you know has the curving form you know you can understand it as a stick form so by putting it in the beginning or the end they actually visually told themselves that it has something to do with this wiggling form so this office right there is actually um, a snake you know as you can see I'll show you different form of the snake since we don't see these animals very often but the ancients see them more often than us and also the word fiddy so you will see this curving form you know they see it again and again but if I want uh, I, 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 if I want to show you the, um, the sharing sound the F of the snake I can also show you the Chinese word too but I'm not going into it today but I just want to show you quickly how uh, pictorial some words are, really are so um, now I want you to pay attention to these two things that uh, we always use as a symbol of fertility. Uh, the thread and the snake were always used as a symbol of fertility since ancient time. Uh, now you don't pay attention to snake, but if you read a lot of the historical books, uh, the father of history, Herodotus, always described you know the uh, the the big snakes and worms that he constantly see around. So you have to understand snake actually give birth to a lot of eggs. 
snakes, you know. So uh, snakes are actually very fertile. So uh, these are the, the rope also, you know, we use it to mean the continuation of our descendant. So you will see that in, in writing itself, I'll show you this is Chinese and you, we see this is descendant. The sound is Sun or Sun. And I will show you a German word, Sun. And then I'll show you a Finnish word, Sunte. It actually means to give birth, a genesis, everything to do with giving birth, okay? So the English word, English word sons, so why they keep putting this as in front or, or after? Actually, the English puro as right there is a way the ancient tried to uh, put infinitive, you know, right there at the, the end. So it is not a grammatical thing. It is a very spiritual belief that they actually put there. Um, and now we think we are very scientific, but at the time of the formation of early languages, they are actually very, very spiritual. So all these are actually put there to signify the endless infinity. So uh, slowly, when time passed by, we actually read them into sound, okay? So now I'm, I'm going to go concentrate on this half of the, 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 the slide, uh, the S sound together, meaning uh, and, uh, in relation to our fertility, okay? So, uh, but before I go on, I want to show you this very interesting language effect, you know, what the linguist call Kiki Buba effect. So if you look up the, the um, internet, you will see that, you know, uh, it's a very interesting human psychology that whenever we heard that E, E, A or A sound, we think of something thin. When we heard, heard the, when they hear this O, U, R sound, we think of very uh, thick form. So uh, in Spanish, I can give you the word delgado, which means means thin and gordo you can see the 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 vowel right there that means fat okay and then uh, the chinese word also coincide with this as i can see this is sin is a little thread sin is a string or rope and then this one sock means a cable so it goes uh, thicker and thicker okay so um I have other slides, but I'm not going to rush through. Uh, I have already gone fast enough, I think. So uh, if you have any question, please do go back to YouTube, type in the uh, program name Basket Starfish, our language core, and you can always stop those video and then uh, look at it slowly because of my timing limit. So I have to go very fast. Thank you.